Good morning, everyone. I'm here with Michael Dastug, and Michael's the Chief Financial Officer for Walmart US. And we're going to talk about a number of things today, Michael. We had earnings release yesterday. We had an investor conference. So we want to talk through the whole process, how it works. We'll get into the numbers some, but I also want to start with you. Let's just start with how did you get into retail? Where'd you grow up? And, and what in life led you to the path that you've been on? Well, uh, thanks for having me this morning. Of course. Um, from a growing up perspective, my dad was a Marine when I was born. And so we lived uh, in the South and we were in North Carolina. We moved to New Orleans and he took a job with Shell Oil and uh, we went to Texas. We went to Alabama. We went back to Texas. And um, probably, I guess it was probably in, the, in high school, I, I took a job with Montgomery Wards, uh, working part time, unloading trucks, working in lawn and garden. By the way, you wouldn't have wanted to buy a lawnmower that I put together. Um, <laughs> so I did need to long term figure out something I was a little bit more capable of. I was probably better at unloading trucks, but uh, uh, did retail for on and off high school and college. And um, Got an accounting de finance degree and went into public accounting. Didn't really like that and got out of uh, grad school and J.C. Penney's was hiring. And I figured, oh, okay, I'll go work for J.C. Penney for a couple years. But 20 years later, I was there and um, had a great time there. And culturally, it, it worked really well for me. And uh, But decided to leave um, when there were some changes about eight years ago. And fortunately, Walmart called. And uh, so I've, I've really enjoyed the last seven years working at the Sam's Club for right, uh, the right. last couple and five years here now at uh, Walmart US. So uh, I can't say that I necessarily thought I was going to have a big retail career. But as a kid, I like to play sports. And I, I think retail is about as close to getting to play sports as you get. You get a daily report card. That's, You're always measuring the score. Yeah. So something we have in common, I, I also started in retail, but I swore I would never work in retail. Was it for me? And yeah, yeah some things just work out. Right. And it turns out I, I really love retail. Right. Talk to us and, and a lot of the audience or associates, but what is the role of the chief financial officer? How would you describe it? Yeah, um, I think, you know, there's, there's kind of the basic blocking and tackling. You know, we need to make sure that we're getting the numbers right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the more important things that we do is we help the organization really understand kind of um, what the investments we're making, right? What are the paybacks for those investments? Um, this is a huge business, right? We just right. reported over $340 billion of sales just in the U.S. business. Um, it's complicated, right? We're, we're making investments in things to serve customers, whether it's a customer that shops in the store, or whether we deliver it to their home or from the store, or whether we deliver it from an FC. Um, there's a lot of complexity that goes with that. And I think it's, you know, it's incumbent upon the, the finance team to help the organization understand these investments. When I was a kid, my parents uh, were, went to what we call the year beginning meeting. And we've got one coming up in a few weeks. We're calling the customer conference. We want to send around the customer. But back in the 80s, mom and dad both went to the meetings. It was a small company, regional store. And I remember one of the meetings that, that mom and dad came back from, dad said, pretty amazing year at Walmart. We did over a billion in sales. And Sam announced we're going to be a $100 billion company one day. And, you know, mind right. blown how we're going right. to get from one to 100. And we're sitting here now talking about 340 and the whole company over 525 and the total number, which is hard to comprehend. But we still manage things one desk, one buyer at a right. time, one store at a time, one DC at a time. So you just have to break it break it all down in ways people don't understand. So when you're working with people in the business that are really in the line, what do you, what would you want them to know about the finance team and how they can support and then the role that they have to make them better business people? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, it's to, to kind of first off, spend time and listen to our business partners and to really understand what they're going through, what type of investments they want to make, what their, what are their goals? Um, and so first we need to seek to understand and then help to then, you know, most of the stuff we tend to do is to take the qualitative and then to quantify it and to figure out where there may be more upside or in some cases more downside. Um, we know we're going to take risk. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that sometimes we're going to make investments that on a piece of paper don't or computer screen don't make sense financially. But you know what? There's this intangible benefit. We're going to learn something. And so sometimes we still need to make those investments, even if there is no return, because it helps to educate us and to learn so that down the road we're going to, you know, see bigger paybacks. You know, I've, I've heard the stories from various folks 
including yourself, about how the company developed the Super Center. And as you said yesterday, right, it's probably the greatest retail concept out there. Um, but it took several iterations of that, right? That's right. That's right? And I'm sure that there were times when some there was probably some finance person that was sitting there going, the numbers don't seem to make sense. Why are we doing this? But think about the, the learnings that took place over those several years and how much of a huge payback it's been over the last 25, 30 years. That's right. Yeah, having an understanding of where the customer where the customer is today, where the customer is going, and trying to pull the vision together is hard. And it, it takes yeah. courage, conviction, and bets. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And we, we yesterday um, in New York, we had an investor conference, and we talked about some of the investments that have worked, and we talked about some that didn't work. And they're both okay. You, you want to accelerate the ones that work and the ones that don't. What, what can you learn from it or extract and move in the core business? One of the things we talked about was Jet Black, a service that we'd offered in New York that someone asked, were we disappointed because it wasn't successful? And actually, we view it as very successful because we learned th things, we built capabilities that now can be applied to the way Mark Laurie described it, the, the, the bigger mothership, the engine, right. Walmart.com. So those are all good. So. Talk about the numbers. Uh, yesterday, um, we released uh, the numbers. Good year. Yeah, I think, you know, Walmart Inc. Re releases earnings, right? And the U.S. business is a really big part of that, right? We're about two-thirds of the company's sales, and we're about 85% of the company's profit. So we drive a lot of the metrics that, that people will hear about uh, externally. But to your point, we had a good comp for the year of 2.8. Um, you know, on a two-year stack basis, uh, basically just adding up the comps for the last two years, we're at 6'4". Um, Good numbers. The, the grocery business, the food and consumable business is a key part of that. We continue the momentum probably on a two-year basis. I think the, the, the stack was probably the best in the last 10 years. Uh, health and wellness had good numbers. They continue to grow scripts. Um, you know, general merchandise for the quarter had some ups, and it also had some challenges. It, you know, the home business, electronics, seasonal, that was pretty good. It was a little bit softer in areas like apparel and toys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the challenges we had this quarter, and we have this every five or six years, is the change in the calendars. There was one less, or about almost one less week between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we do think that had some impact, because that's where we really saw some of the slowdown. The great part for the quarter was that we did start to pick up more momentum back in January, and we're off to a good start this year. You know, but for the year, we grew profit. Um, I think, you know, in terms of, you know, our associates out in the stores, I think it's really important for them to know that we really appreciate all the hard work, not just for the quarter or for the year, but for the last four to five years, because we've made a lot of progress in this business. Good year. A um, lot of progress being made. The Investor Conference. Um, you, you know this yeah. well, but I'd love for you to explain it. Why, why do we do it? And what does the team of people who are asking us questions and listening, what do they do? And sure. how does it affect stock price? Yeah, no, it's, it's not something that's required, right? It's really, it's, it's the company's prerogative to, to sit down with the analysts. Sometimes we do it here in Northwest Arkansas. Sometimes we do it in New York. And, you know, for you uh, to sit, to stand up there, they know who John Ferner is. But John, they know John Ferner from when he was running Sam. So yesterday, they got to sit and visit with John Ferner, who's presenting about Walmart US and everything you've learned over the last three months and you know how you're thinking about the business differently. And it's really important that they, they get to know you and trust you. Because at the end of the day, when you think about it, a stock is really the, everyone's expectation about what the future benefits that this company is going to create. And a lot of that's not just quantitative, it's really the qualitative. And so that they get to spend time with you and Doug and Brett and really, you know, think about the business differently, the things that, that you're focused on, the things that you're prioritizing. It was a fun event. Um, I think it went, went as well as it could have. And, uh, you know, thanks to the team that helped us put it all together. Okay, so a couple of questions just to wrap this up. What do you do when you're not working? When I'm not working, I'm, I'm usually spending time with my wife. We're now officially empty nesters. And... Uh, we have two big dogs, and I spend a lot of time when uh, I have free time to try to tire them out on big, two, you know, two-hour walks. And uh, when I can get out of state, because I've got I've got kids in Texas, one in school in Tennessee, and one up in New York, I try to get go visit them and spend time with them. And uh, as uh, I, you know, when I can get out of the office and do a little traveling, my wife usually wants to take us on some exotic place. So um, she's she's now you know right now trying to plan what, what our big summer vacation is going to be. Okay, well, let's leave it there. <laughs> Michael, thanks. Congratulations on a great year. Thanks, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. it.